So hello everyone. Uh, this is Prashant again, and this is the final part, uh, final part of the series, of the VPC series. And in this part, uh, we are again going to create a VPC, but this time using Terraform. So there are some prerequisites for that. I already assume that you already watched two of my previous video in the series, which is introduction to VPC, and how. Uh, I created a VPC using a VPC console so that you have a good idea about it. Secondly, you already have some basic knowledge about Terraform because this time I'm going to create a VPC using a Terraform. Okay. So if you remember the second part of the series in which I have created VPC using the AWS console, uh, there are a bunch of things which is created by uh, AWS for us. And there are few things which we need to take care of by ourselves. So those things are like network echo control list, like NECL or network access control list, security group and route table. And after that, we have created internet gateway, subnet and custom route table. The bad news is uh, because we are creating this via Terraform. So all these things we need to create it manually. But the good news is this is just a one time task. Later on, if we need to build one more VPC, we don't need to go through that manual process. We need to do some minor changes. For example, we need to change the CIDR range or we need to change the subnet range, but rest of the thing will be automated or called infrastructure as a code, which is why the Terraform is so much popular. Okay, so let's get started. This is how my code structure look like. So basically by the at the end of this, we are going to create Terraform module, Terraform VPC module. Okay. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to create this VPC resource is called, is called data or a data resource. So what data resource will do is to query all the AWS availability zone in a given region and then allow Terraform to use those resources. So for example, if I want to create this in Oregon region, what data resource will do is query all those uh, availability zone in that region. And then uh, the output of that will become input to the our Terraform resource. So in this way, I don't need to hard code those value. Now, let me tell you how to find that. So the best thing you can do is search for Terraform AWS. And in the first link, search for data, I'm sorry, not here, here, data, AWS, or AWS underscore availability zone. Don't be confused with the zone and zones. Use this. So Terraform support two types of resources. One is data resource and second one is called resource itself. So the difference between them is in a case of a resource, we are creating something and data resource is just to query something which is already available in AWS. So for example, in this case, we are querying the resources or the zones which are already provided by the AWS. Same way we can query the AMI resource. So for example, if my requirement is to find out what is the latest AMI for CentOS which is available in this month, that I can do with the help of data resource. So what I need to do is just copy, paste this code. How to use this code, how to use this part of uh, this data resource in our code, uh, I will take, uh, we will take a look at this later. Okay. So now we have the data resource. The second thing is, uh, let's do VPC creation. And for that VPC creation also, we have a resource called AWS underscore VPC. So again, go back to the same document, search for VPC. this VPC resources and here search for AWS underscore VPC. 
so the main thing with terraform is you just need to know for example all these things we did uh, manually when we are creating these resources using the help of uh, aws console so i just have the idea about all these things and i need to know i just need to know what exactly i need to search under this page so aws underscore vpc the same thing which i did earlier I'm just going to copy paste this code and change few of those values. So first thing is I don't want to hard code any of these value. So I will create a variable out of it. Okay. And that variable I need to define in my variable file variable cider underscore range and before we are going to create a module out of it let put our default value so that we can do initial testing and we will remove all these value once we create a mod uh, we will going to create an actual vpc module so for the purpose of this demo i am using this range okay now what else we can do with this cider so there are few things which we can enable one is enable dns host name set to true these are all implicit but it's good to define all these and true okay and it's always a good idea to give tag to your resources for this, I'm going to give my test Terraform VPC. Okay. So here we have enabled two parameters. One is called enable DNS hostname. And the second thing which we did is the enable DNS support. So let's look at these parameters. So first is enable DNS support. What this parameter will do, uh, in case if you are planning to use private hosted zone under Route 53, then Amazon provided DNS will help us to resolve, uh, will help you to resolve those zones. Okay, so this is something to do with the, your private hosted zone, and I am not going to dive into like what exactly a Route 53. Uh, it's simply a, it's a, a DNS service provided by AWS. So in case if you are planning to use a private hosted zone. Uh, this entry will help you, this enable DNS support to resolve those jobs. The second one is called enable DNS hostname. Uh, this will ensure that uh, the instances that you are launched into your VPC receives a DNS hostname. Okay, simple. So now we have declared our data resource uh, for AWS availability zone and we have defined a resource for uh, your VPC. In the next step, we are going to create an internet gateway. And let's get adding. We are creating a VPC here. And now we are creating an internet gateway. Creating. Internet gateway. And just to remind you guys, this is a cider range I have cho chosen. That's seven seventy two sixteen dot zero dot zero. This is similar to the same cider range which we have discussed. Like Amazon support three kind of a cider range, or they have recommended to use three kind of cider range, which are uh, class A, class B, and class C private ranges. So out of this, I choose the class B range because in the previous demo using a AWS console, I choose uh, class A. So just for the purpose of this, I am using class B. There is nothing specific about it. So internet gateway. So how we are going to create the internet gateway? Again, going back to this, search for VPC resource and here search for internet gateway, AWS internet gateway. Again, copy paste this code. So 
so again the resource is internet aws internet gateway we are giving the variable a name called gw it doesn't hardly matter then we are using a variable interpolation what it is going to do is it's um, because if you remember we need to associate our internet gateway to the vpc so that's what we are doing here so we are referencing this resource aws underscore vpc with a variable main and id okay these are just basic terraform stuff and the name i am giving to it is uh my test terraform igw okay and if you remember that internet gateway is used uh, by the public subnet so that your instances in public subnet can talk to the internet okay so now we are done with the availability zone with the vpc and with the internet gateway the next step we are going to create a route table and in this case we are going to create a two route table uh, one is the custom route table and which is ultimately with the public route table and we are going to associate internet gateway to it and the second one is the private route table uh, where we are going to assign our uh, uh, private subnet okay so for that purpose again go back here search for vpc resource no not this and search for route table aws underscore route table or root table whatever way you pronounce okay just copy this code paste it here okay so give it a name variable name public route okay uh, you can see this turns out to be red because in our code we are using main as a variable so change it to main okay and the route so like i mentioned earlier this is going to be a public route table so rather than using this i will specify everything will go via internet gateway okay and i am not too much worried about uh, ipv6 at this stage so let's remove this code block and under name give it my public route table okay so because this route table has access to internet and that's why i'm saying it is a public route table okay the same way we have created a public route table let's give it a name let's create private route table or default route table and guess what for this also we have a resource in uh, uh, terraform and vpc resource and that resource is called aws default route table again copy paste this code as you can see what i am doing i just uh, know the name of the resource i am copy uh, pasting that code in my code and just changing the variable reference so here aws default route table let me call it a private route table okay and we know for sure that we are using the main as a variable okay and we are going to reference that default route table with this and i am not because this is explicit by default that any route which is not associated with any table a uh, custom route table is associated with the default route table okay so 
let's say my default route table my default route table okay so up till this point we have done a great job and we have created a, a data resource for availability zone we have created our aws vpc uh, we have created our internet gateway uh, we have created a route table public route table and a private route table so this is a good point to stop in the next video i am going to continue and we are going to associate this route table a public route table uh, with two subnets and same way we are going to associate uh, like first we are going to create two subnet one is a public and one is a private and then we are going to associate the public subnet uh, with the route table the public route table and uh, the rem the two private subnet with the default route table and finally we are going to create a security group and then ultimately at the end we are going to create a module out of it okay so thanks for watching this video let me continue in the second video